Folkland, on today's episode, we take a quick look back at Week 18. We know that some championships were made and lost in that week. A lot of news to cover. The The coaching carousel is starting to spin. And the footy nominations. We announce this year's potential winners for the greatest award in the land, the footies. Stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment. Like this episode. And enjoy. While you sort out your 2022 budget, think about this. You can save 72% on restaurant quality meals with HelloFresh, and you don't even need to hit the grocery store. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS16. Bookland kickoff 2022 with a better checking account and no monthly fees. Chime, an award-winning app and debit card. It has no overdraft fees, foreign transaction fees, monthly fees, or service fees. And with over 60,000 fee-free in-network ATMs at many locations like Walgreens, 7-Eleven, CVS, you can access your money when you need it, where you need it. Make your first good decision of the new year and join over 10 million people using Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes. It doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash footballers. That's Chime.com slash footballers. Banking services provided in debit card issued by the Bank Corp or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC get fee-free transactions at any Money Pass ATM in a 7-Eleven location at any All Point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Otherwise, out-of-network ATM withdrawal freeze may apply. Sometimes pay anyone instant transfers can be delayed. The recipient must use a valid debit card or be a Chime member to claim funds. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday. January 11th, the year is 2022, and we are the Fantasy Footballers. Back with you. The season in the books. We made it, everybody. Did we, though? Well, yes. yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I, mean. think, I, think we, I think we are proof. Of uh, like being here, that we have made it here, and and what a season it was! What a what a conclusion to the regular season. I mean, it was it was already kind of a playoff game at the end, but they, then, yeah, they were very kind to us. Wow, that was uh, speaking of the Chargers Raiders game. That was awesome. Justin Herbert completing every fourth down possible pressure. Uh, the the tie drama where you know. I don't know if the timeout by Brandon Steely. I don't know. Did you guys hear the explanation on that? I sort of. I've tried to piecemeal everything together. The explanation uh, was that they had the wrong personnel on the field to defend the run. Right. And so they wanted to switch so that they could give up a 10-yard run to Josh Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. Uh, but, the, but the Raiders took that as signal that the Chargers didn't want to tie. Is that? Am I reading that right? Is possibly, although tying was stupid because if you tie the Raiders, they go to Arrowhead and they lose next week. Now they get to go to Cincinnati, and I think that's a ball game because it's just a different. You know, you have the uh, kind of experienced at home Chiefs. It seems like you're completely outmatched versus an inexperienced uh, Joe Burrow. First time in the playoffs, at least you get a shot. So the kick, the win, it was all worth it for the Raiders. We got treated to a, a heck of a a game and, and Justin Herbert ends the year with 5,000 yards and 41 touchdowns in not a playoff appearance, which yeah, is could disappointing. You, could you imagine watching that game as a diehard Steelers fan? I mean, that talk about the excitement of no, you can't possibly end in a tie. And it, at one point in the game, it seems like that's not even feasible when the Raiders are up so much. And then it goes overtime and man, down to the wire. Uh, I will say this if you're noticed, if you're watching, I'm at home again uh, because if you look left or right right now in the world, you find somebody with COVID. And unfortunately, uh, my wife and son are both down with COVID, as is Al's family, and not from each other. So 
Uh, everybody stay safe out there. Right now it is a just wild and crazy time. And uh, it, it doesn't seem like it matters how safe you are. You can still get it. So um, they're doing all right. And uh, I'm glad that I could somehow jump on here and do the do show. We, do we know if bears can get COVID? Are we aware of whether we need to protect I, Jay Grizz? My guess is that bears, pro I think animals can get it. Uh, cardboard bears, though, I believe they're it's more resistant. difficult. They're very immune. Yeah. Is he uh, vaccinated? Not, not to creasing, though. Like, okay. creasing will take him out. That's true. Yeah. Fire. This may. I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny whether this is the first version of, of Jay Grizz on the set. But uh, we do have a lot that we're going to talk about today. We're going to introduce the Footy Award nominees. If you're new to the show this year, we have a the illustrious Footy Awards on the Thursday episode of the show today. You will be introduced to the categories and the candidates for footy awards in 20, uh, for the 2021 season, and you can vote at footclanvote.com before Thursday and contribute to uh, who will win these illustrious awards. Ooh, this is so exciting. I forgot. <laughs> I'm, I'm, go I'm literally, as you were saying that, I'm like, Oh, heck yeah, I haven't voted yet. and uh, The vote's it, not open yet, Jason. It sure is. I'm looking at it right now, buddy. Wait, it's open? Yeah, I went to footclanvote.com, and I can uh, submit my uh, answers. Well, look at us. Yeah, yeah, and we'll count yours, Jason, this year. Uh, Twitter, at the FF Ballers, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman, at Andy Holloway on Twitter, and the community, which I encourage everybody, jump on board, jointhefoot.com, we're a year-round show. And uh, we're just getting started. We got truth episodes coming up after we give away the footy awards. And uh, we'll be into draft season and free agency. And those things happen quick. So we'll reflect on the season. We'll, we'll do right by it. But we'll be talking about a lot of dynasty implications. And if you started tuning out towards the end of the year, you know, the last three or four weeks are going to define a lot of players end of season ranks and things of that nature. So it's very important to be tuned in. News and notes from around the league. Guys, the moment you've been looking forward to for a long time. Rex Burkett mm. signed to a contract extension through the 2022 season. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this is, I don't know that this makes a huge impact on anything other than in Dynasty Leagues. If you have Rex Burkett, you can hope that he has one more year of relevance, but. Rex Burkhead has been low key useful for sure for like six weeks now. I'm not saying every single week has been uh, an absolute slam dunk for him, but you know, since the the game against the Jets, where he was the running back 33, but that's not great. But you have a running back 27 finish, a 26, a number four overall finish. Like for a dude off the waiver wire and dynasty waiver wires at that, he's he's been useful and a lot of opportunities in that time period who knows what this team is going to be next year they're already uh you know making some making some moves or some whispers i should say of uh possible moves that they're going to make got breaking news for you uh josina anderson reporting that giants general manager dave gettleman <gasps> it's me dave what Def if what do you what <laughs> What are you talking about? Well, you're the report. You're reporting in this situation. Planning to retire. Oh, yeah. smart. That's that's right. Uh, you you can't fire me. I I'm quit. out on my own terms. Dave out. A uh, lot of turnover to announce, and and that's just another piece of the puzzle here. The Giants uh, general manager Dave Gettleman on the way out. Retirement uh, will suit him and the Giants fans well, I think, with them. I've what, been have, retired for four years. They have the fifth pick in the draft, the Jets and Giants back-to-back -back again. When I was supposed to be <laughs> working. You um, guys get them all in. This is your last chance. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. I is mean, like, just use well, them up. Our, our, our Dave Gettleman, our Matt Nagy time. Like, this is, this is, this is our moment, uh, <laughs> our last chance to really uh, get them strong. Uh, you've got Baker Mayfield uh, news. But Brown's planning to head into the offseason with the intention of retaining him entering 2022, according to Ian Rappaport and Tom Pelissero. So Baker entering the 
middle tier quarterback phase of his career, which yeah, it's not the best place for for you to be as an NFL franchise. And you know you can blame injury, but we haven't seen I think enough elite play from him consistently in his career to think that it's only injury. And Jason, you made a great point on the other show, like. That injury didn't affect which choice he had on which player to throw to and things of that nature. Yeah, he, he's been he's been bad. I mean, I, I don't think there's any other way to say it. Oh, since his rookie year, where he came in and you know tied the rookie record in in uh, fewer games than you know a full season, he's just been at best mediocre. Like his peak has been okay. You're a decent quarterback this game. Um, and so I don't know, maybe it is, uh, a, a lack of sync with the coordinator. Maybe it's a lack of weapons or whatever excuses you want to make. But the reality is he hasn't been good. And I don't think that any of these little changes around him are going to fix that problem. And I think he'll probably be their quarterback in 2022 and not in 2023. It's yeah, uh, everything you need to know is when when the talk of hey Case Keenum might start this game or that game, uh, everyone's like yeah that's about the same. I mean when when you hear that, um, and you think to yourself well Gardner Minshew starting for the Browns might be better. Like when you think about that, it tells you that the future is not very bright. And that that has, you know, he could be one more year removed from the Marcus Mariota level of value in a dynasty league, and that's mm -hmm. the headline for fantasy players. He could be transitioning into a backup role before you know it. Mm -hmm. Lots of news about fired head coaches. Let's start. Vic yep. Fangio, Pat Shermer gone for the Broncos. This one is uh, we we got the news on this a little earlier than the other coaches because they played um, on Saturday. Um, the it's going to be a obviously a, a rebuild and they'll have to figure out what they're doing with their quarterback situation whether or not they still believe drew Locke can be in the car oh, they but don't they don't believe that at all no i i, I don't believe that they should um they clearly i've got the recipe the, oh, give it to us hire brian flores and you get deshaun watson that's what happens you hire brian flores you get deshaun watson it's not a rebuild here this is a right. this is this is a if you can if you're the coach that can attract the right quarterback, you have everything else. This yes, is the do. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is uh, the Buccaneers before Brady to me. The Broncos are the most desirable job in the off season, in my opinion. You think so? I, I, I do. would put it. I I think that the Bears would be the most desirable job. Just really. Be yeah, I mean, I, I think, was going to go Dolphins. Well, there you go. There's there's a lot of desirable jobs out there. Um, it's just a matter of I I believe going in quarterback is you know that th the job is as good as your quarterback is. So when you're saying grab Brian Flores and he might come with Deshaun Watson because there's rumors that you know that's why he that's why Watson wanted to go to Miami was uh you know for the head coach. So that would that would make sense there. But I believe in Justin Fields. I think that if you bring in a coach that knows how to use his skill set, he can he can be a long term answer. That makes sense. Matt Nagy is gone. If you didn't pick up ah, on the one last time, baby. The the budget magician throw one out. <laughs> oh. No magic tricks to keep his job this offseason. It's the final <laughs> countdown. Does he and, go be uh, offensive coordinator again someplace? I would not be shocked if he gets another offensive coordinator job. I, I don't think Matt Nagy is bad. We've we've talked about it. I I I don't think he's great. He should have been let go. Um, I think it's going to be good for the Bears. I think it's good for Justin Fields to move on and get someone in uh, specific uh, that that can help Justin Fields. Um, but Matt Nagy wasn't Adam Gase levels of like he's bad. Um, but this is you know I I think th this whole division. Uh, the Bears and the Vikings are both moving on from both head coach and general manager, which, you know, that, that, that means there's, you know, a little bit more rebuilding potential here in this division. Uh, imagine if Aaron Rodgers does leave, this division could be unrecognizable in short order. Uh, Mike Zimmer gone, Rick Spielman gone for the Vikings. Uh, there is a report. Not all is lost for these coaches. Don't worry. Joe Judge is staying, according to Justina Anderson. So Joe Judge will retain his job, and Brian Flores 
of the Miami Dolphins being like uh, a, has been released. I I think I think the he has greater odds. Brian Flores, I believe, will be a head coach in 2022. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he could go from being fired from the Dolphins to being immediately hired by one of the other openings. It's obviously it's not a guarantee. There's very few, I, I, as of right now, five uh, positions that are open. Um, but he is talented enough, and he proved enough. I mean, he beat the the Patriots pretty consistently, back to back winning seasons, and when the team could have completely given up and just yes. gone away, you know, losing seven games in a row, he turned it around and ended up with a winning season. So, yeah, I, I think I think uh, Flores gets a job this year. How crazy is that? 10-6 and six last year, and then after the incredible losing streak, still finished 9-8, and eight, and the dude is let go. I mean, well, that, to me, that's absurd. Well, it's it's not – performance it's relationship i mean it, something like that and and in fact uh the press conference this morning uh the owner was talking about how you know it's just th there weren't great relationships over the three years and that that's kind of something they wanted to improve on and he and the, he said he expects brian flores to get another head coaching opportunity so um it you know some of it is internal relationships that we don't get uh to see and that's just ooh, they're all human beings and so. uh, 24 and 25 was his record, I believe, with Miami over three years. It must be difficult if you were part of a rebuild. It's hard to lay it at his feet. Obviously, starting one and seven is laid at his feet, and that set him behind the eight ball. Uh, we've got the Lions parting ways with Anthony Lynn as offensive coordinator. So Anthony Lynn gets fired from the head coaching gig and the offensive coordinator gig in back-to-back -back years. That's not, it's not a good look. Uh, Matt Rule is going to return as Carolina's head coach, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. That was another rumored potential firing. Uh, I don't know if it needed to happen or not. Um, that one might have felt. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about Matt Rule. I don't. I don't think he's a great head coach, but he also dealt with a lot this year. He dealt with a lot, and he, that was. But he his brought second. it on himself. Sh sure, <laughs> there was some. Uh... Some hijinks going on there in, in uh, Carolina, but that was his second year. Am I remembering that right? That is correct. correct. And like when they signed him, it was a monster deal. Like it was a it was a seven year, I think. Yeah, it was a lot of money for a lot of years. Which I mean, if you're going to be paying this guy anyways, you might as well give him a third year in something that was a rebuild project. Yeah, it was a seven year, sixty two million dollar deal. And the reality was this is a this was a massive rebuild. Like when he took over, uh, this was tear it down and rebuild completely. And if you look at what they put out on the field this year, their defense was great. Like they, they had a very good defense. Their offense was uh, just a gross thing to watch. Uh, a, a just you're you're swimming in landfills um when you're when you're looking at that offense but they lost Christian McCaffrey they lost um you know obviously the, the quarterback roulette with injuries and lack of talent um was very difficult i'm i'm happy they gave him another year and hopefully they can figure something out with the quarterback position i doubt they do but um yeah give give him one more shot 18.5 million dollars on the books next year with Sam Darnold Whoops. So, yeah. Yeah, that's not great, but probably deserves one more year when you spent that kind of money. It would be the equivalent of like letting Dan Campbell go after that long-term deal or Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco after that long-term deal. That's tough to do. Um, but but uh, next year, he'll be, he'll be on the hot seat if yes, things don't turn around. Yes, certainly will. Uh, what else do we have here? Any other news in terms of head coaching roulette? I mean, we're just we're on the watch for the. There was rumors of uh, David Coley from the Houston Texans being a one and done coach. Which when the, when those rumors were coming out, that felt pretty weird. So like, what he had, to, he came into thinking that he was going to have Deshaun Watson as a franchise quarterback and no draft picks, and they turned that into I think four wins. Uh, they took Tennessee to the brink yesterday. I mean. I I thought the, the the hiring of Coley was a little bit strange, but you at least have to give this guy some time. 
But those, again, those were just rumors yesterday, so we'll see if that happens later today. But we do have our playoff matchups. We've got the, what, super wild card weekend. This is wild card weekend with a mushroom. Like, this thing is, it's got a Monday night football game. And, and Jason's uh, not even going to watch, apparently. <laughs> I'll watch. I'll just watch very pessimistically as a Cardinals fan uh, playing on the first Monday night football wild card weekend ever. Um, yeah, the Cardinals will be playing the Rams thanks to the Rams losing and the Cardinals losing. Uh, when are we doing our Super Bowl picks? Thursday. In Thursday, okay. We'll do those on Thursday, yeah. So the, the Raiders are taking on the Bengals, the Patriots – on the road against the Bills, and those are the Saturday games. Sunday we get the triple threat, the Eagles versus the Bucks, 49ers versus Cowboys, and Pittsburgh versus the Chiefs, and then Monday night again is the Cardinals at Rams. Uh, you'll notice, if you didn't follow yesterday's weekend, you'll notice there is a name missing from this list, and that would be the Indianapolis Colts. Whoa. Oh, man. That all they had to do was beat the Jacksonville Jaguars and they and booked a the trip to the playoffs, and they choked. Carson Wentz, thank you for that horn. Carson Wentz played horrifically bad football. Uh, Johnny Taylor couldn't get anything going. Trevor Lawrence played possibly his best game of the year. Uh, he saved the best for last. I just It was quite a turn of events of... I don't remember what the line was, but the Colts had to have been heavy favorites taking oh, on the Jaguars. Yeah, 16 Massive. and a half points or something like that. What? I mean, you, <laughs> you should have walked off the field when they stuffed Taylor on fourth in goal from the one. That should have been the end. That should have been the walk-off play. I mean, what? It, uh, here we, we have the numbers. So uh, a perfect QBR is 100. An average QBR is 50. That's pretty easy for us all to understand, right? 100, yeah, 100 is, is perfect. perfect 50 is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in a game that they had to win to go to the playoffs, Carson Wentz posted a QBR of 4.4. <laughs> oh, man. It is, it, that might even be one of those things where it's like if you throw an incomplete pass, your your QBR would actually be better, where that happens sometimes with passer rating. But that is – that is a really disappointing thing for the Indianapolis Colts. I, for that yeah. fan base, I am sorry. That yeah, is that's brutal. There was a point in the season they were trending so strongly that you thought they yes. could be they could make a run. I mean, the way Taylor was playing and and Wentz was playing and the trust people have. You know, Frank Reich was kind of a finalist in the in the Twitter sphere for Coach of the Year. Was. You know, yeah. was, 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 yeah, <laughs> no longer. But I mean, this was a holistic loss. I mean, you have the defense giving up the best game of the year to this Jacksonville offense with, you know, no James Robinson and company. So, um, Carson I guess, Wentz was sacked six times by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Woof. That's not good. No, that's not good. Um, so yeah, we'll do our Super Bowl picks that way. You know, we'll take another day or two to think about this. That way I can get them perfect. You know what I mean? You right, want to get them, of course. You want to hit the nail on the head, and uh, playoff challenge and such on Thursday, um, and we'll get into some studs and duds here in a minute. Foot Clan, it's the new year. You know what that means, Jay? That what? means Valentine's Day. It's right oh around goodness. the corner, and the way to the heart is through Uncommon Goods. Looking for gifts is very difficult, and that's where Uncommon Goods they're here for you. They have thousands of meaningful gifts that you can't find anywhere else. We're talking one-of-a-kind gifts that are perfect for your one-of-a-kind love. Uncommon Gifts has hundreds, hundreds of gifts that you can customize based on your unique love story. They offer a wide variety of uncommon experiences that make the perfect romantic date night. They have live virtual classes that include topics like aphrodisiac cooking for two, Ooh. magic what? and mixology, romantic map making, and more. Fellas, fellas, listen up. We're not always the best. But check romantic map making. Is that M A P map yeah, map? Yeah, wow. like you make a map to be more romantic. Okay, I hope it's not geography based. <laughs> From personalized art and fine jewelry to kitchen, home and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. They you should got to go check that out. Check them out. I have uh, 
Gotten several things off of Uncommon Goods. Always been happy. And right now, to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash footballers. That's uncommongoods.com slash footballers for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of ordinary. Mm, well done. Thank you. Um, also, Foot Clan, this year, let Indochino take care of your 2022 style edit. You can customize everything with Indochino from suits to shirts to chinos to bomber jackets at prices more affordable than you might expect. And there is something very special about actually custom fitting suits. These aren't large or extra large. They're not even like size 36. This is measured tailored to your body to your body uh, we've all got events coming up i got a gala to go to i'm hosting a wedding at my house you're going to a gala? yes i'm going to what gala. and guess what i'm wearing mike i'm wearing an indochino suit get your wardrobe personalized with your style and your taste without spending a fortune the best part indochino suits they start from just 429 dollars shirts from 79 dollars with all the customizations included Give yourself a style edit that sets the tone for the rest of the year with Indochino, and you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using the promo code FOOTBALLERS at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on studs and does. I want to get to the footy nominations, but I will. Um, I'll breeze through them and I'll ask some questions with regards to uh, long term value on these players and, and maybe some reflections on the season. Um, you know, Justin Herbert attempted 64 passes in the game last night, uh, which is the most since 2019, where when Jared Goff attempted 69 passes. So. Nice. You know, Justin Herbert, when you look at the past few years, right, you've got a dynasty landscape of Patrick Mahomes as the, you know, the the longevity there. Where are you putting Herbert in the kind of uh, Mount Rushmore of dynasty quarterbacks? Hmm. It's a great question. He's he's top five to me. Um, I, I Is think... he ahead of Mahomes based on? No. Even not with for th me. this year beating him out and the yeah. youth? Yeah, I, I, I don't put him ahead of Mahomes um, going forward. He might have um, beat him out on the course of the season, but Mahomes missed some time, I believe. But regardless, going forward, you've got uh, Andy Reid and Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey. I, I think that there's more clarity and, and more history of getting it done. And even though he's a little bit younger, both these guys are still uh, very young in their careers. Though th That is one thing that is great with Herbert, though, is his age. He's not... He's not like, oh, he's only 26. The dude's not 24 yet. That is crazy to be doing what he's doing in the NFL. So I, I certainly put him in the top five um, going forward, but I would not take him ahead of Patrick Mahomes at the same cost. Do you agree with that, Mike? Yes, I do. I would take Mahomes. They're very, they're, they're very close to me. Um, I like the stability that's in Los Angeles. Obviously, there's more in Kansas City, but um, I would be buying my Joshua Palmer in – dynasty that's for sure uh you're looking at a nice week from ryan Tannehill. is when it didn't matter finally uh congratulations to no one for that one <laughs> i mean four touchdown passes had he even thrown over two i mean this year probably twice maybe um so that was kind of just humorous and obviously julio jones like they are yeah, they are julio, man julio! They're, peaking. they're peaking at the time when like Let's just face it. If you win the number one seed, none of the rest of this garbage that happened this year matters. I mean, if, if Derrick Henry is back and Julio Jones is healthy and A.J. Brown is healthy, none of it matters. Just go win a Super Bowl and you forget the whole season of injuries. Yes, uh, we say all that, and I'll be very surprised if any of us have <laughs> Tennessee as our Super Bowl pick I'm, on Thursday. I, you know, it's it's uh, it's hard to do, but I'm oh. try, bark, bark. I'm, tr <laughs> I'm trying to get there. I am. I'm trying to get there. Okay, they're, we'll they, see. They, we'll see Thursday if you uh, were able to get there. If you were I think a coward, I could, I could maybe. Do, uh, thank you, Jason. <laughs> you know how I I succumb <laughs> to these bark, bark. these very mature <laughs> threats. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson. 
uh, got it done. You know, Russ looked so much better at the end of the year than he did during the immediate coming back from the finger injury. Uh, running back wise, Rashad Penny is the storyline. Rashad Penny. What do you possibly do with him in a dynasty league? He do, His fifth year option was not picked up, which I'm not blaming Seattle for that. The, the guy's entire career essentially to this point has been just riddled with injury. And then uh, since uh, – let, let me pull up the actual weeks. Do, do you want to know what his pace was over the last five games? I was going to say, since week 14 – It's got to be 2,500 lead, yards. He leads the league in rushing since week 14. He's been unbelievable. His his uh, five game pace would be twenty two hundred and eighty. There you go. One yards on the ground with twenty rushing touchdowns. Um, yeah, Let me I mean, tell he, you what, he has been unstoppable. What complicates this situation to me? Obviously, the contract is a complication, right? The injury not having one. Yeah, not having one, and the injury history. But he did enough in this span to where he's absolutely going to get a job. Yes. You know, whether it's with Seattle or somewhere else, the potential here is so great. But then you also have a complicating factor in the fact that the regime that took Rashad Penny, that would be willing to reinvest in Rashad Penny, could not be back. I mean, you have this you have reports that Pete Carroll is going to be speaking with management and it's going to be like the Joe Judge discussion of okay, what's your plan? Are we keeping you around? Like there could be there could be Russell Wilson centered choices here in Seattle Fair. where it, where it's a, what do you want to do Russ you know Pete is I believe the oldest or second oldest head coach in football so you are talking about if you take him out of the picture how confident can you be with a team that has Chris Carson under contract to bring back Penny and obviously his best ceiling seems to be Seattle um, but he could be a guy that goes and gets a starting job I immediately. Just seems like a team would need to have other committee backs to bring in a Rashad Penny just based on the injuries. Yeah, and he is 26 years old. So if you're when you're talking in dynasty, like what am I doing with Penny? If I were one, if I was a truther and Selling? I held on, if I had him for all this time, I'm just going to hold on to him and I'm going to see what happens. And if he's not on my team. I'm just gonna admire it from afar, because uh, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna go invest what it would take for a for like because this is emotional now. Mm -hmm. If you had Penny on your Dino squad and you made it into the playoffs, there is a very good chance that you were able to jump on the back of Rashad Penny and that dude carried you. Yes, to, we did, Mike. Yeah, we we certainly did. But, dude. Uh, 137 yards, 135, 170, 190. Those are uh, those are ludicrous games. Two touchdowns, one touchdown, two touchdowns, one touchdown. So I'm I'm not I'm not gonna try and trade high for Rashad Penny, and I'm not gonna. I can't imagine someone's gonna pay the, the, the trade cost that I want if I'm gonna ship Penny away. I'm just gonna hold on and enjoy the ride. So let me ask you this, because. James Conner scored two more times. He's a free sure. agent. He's a free agent as well. And I heard it on the broadcast, you know, whether I think it was Mark Schlera saying, oh, he's going to get paid a bunch of money. No, he's Th not. Um, so I guess my question was, does he, and does he get paid more than Rashad Penny? And which of these guys do you like more for a dynasty league? Because they're really not, like it feels like they're vastly different, but they're uh, they're basically the same age. They're both going into free agency, and James Conner is has been absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I I would I would prefer James Conner. I I would assume right now that you know the Vegas betting touchdowns. odds 15. would be yeah the the Vegas betting odds would be for these running backs to land on the teams that they just played for. Right, um, and if that happened again, and both were made the starters going forward. I think you'd have to side on James Conner. He, he did it for an entire season. Uh, he's involved in the passing game uh, and probably a little bit more confidence in the overall offense. Antonio Gibson with a huge week against the Giants. I Josh mean, Jacobs I, looked really, really good in the year. Josh Jacobs looked fantastic yesterday. I mean, it's the Chargers. And a lot of teams, you know, running back looks fantastic against the Chargers. Uh, especially when you call a timeout to get your run personnel onto the field, specifically because you know they are going to run the ball. 
and that turns into a 10-yard gain or whatever it was. But, yeah, Jacobs has been very, very quiet but very consistent and helpful for fantasy. He's had, like, the quietest, best fantasy yes, it season is. I can remember because, I mean, he has just not let people down on a weekly basis. He's pretty much always an RB2 or better almost the entire season. As long he as has, he's playing. Yeah, yeah, as long as – definitely as long as he's playing. Like, he has – He's arrived on time. Like he's ne he doesn't have a box of donuts in his hand. There's never like a coffee for the office, but he's on time. He's very punctual. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, and sometimes you just need a punctual person on your fantasy squad. Just but you it. might not like him as much if he never brings you nothing. So That's they, true. I think that happens as well. Um one other guy I think that needs to be brought up is Devin Singletary who had, you know, Rashad Penny is certainly over the last 5 weeks is, has stolen the show, mm -hmm. but Devin Singletary has been right behind him. He's a top five running back over the same stretch, and he's taken over the job for the Buffalo Bills while they've been winning games. Does he get the job next year as their main guy? Do I don't they think replace so. him in the draft. I don't know, man. No, because he did this before. He has done this before. This is what led to the great off season of Devin Singletary dynasty hype and excitement. Yep is we were here, and then we were disappointed with the Zach Moss signing. Um, you know, there's always the possibility he's the guy next year because they don't invest or draft or sign somebody. But it's, It is definitely in the range of outcomes. So are you in Dino or are you making that play? Are you sell, going I'm, selling, I'm selling high, personally. Okay. And I like the guy. I'm just – what are you doing, Jay? Are you selling high? Are you holding? Are you buying? I, I'm holding. I think that – I, I think if – the draft falls the right way for the Bills. They will draft a running back and bring it in, and the value will go away. But we, we saw that kind of with Miami this last year. I think they they were doing the same thing, but the running backs were taken just ahead of them that they wanted. And then coming in, you had you know Gaskin with the opportunity. I, if, if you can trade him for a guaranteed opportunity, though, right? Because sure. Like, like you always you, say, you always yeah, say if, if you, you get trade, the value. If you could trade potential – for a known commodity, then if the potential hits, it doesn't matter. You you got the value. One of the free agents at the wide receiver position that people are all hyped about in Dynasty, or at least optimistic, is Cedric Wilson, who ended up with two touchdowns, five for 119. Uh, believe it or not, Kyle just let us know, Cedric Wilson, more top 20 weeks than Amari Cooper on the year. Ooh, how's that feel, Jay? It doesn't feel good, but <laughs> thankfully, C.D. Lamb was my guy, not Amari Cooper. Uh, it's so, Cedric Wilson... You know, I am I wrong to doubt him landing someplace and having a, a relevant role and, and feeling like, you know, these burst weeks in Dallas is kind of the peak of what we're going to see from him? Or do you think he's going to go someplace and, you know, much like the Michael Gallup free agency, get a better opportunity? Uh, I mean, the question for me is, I guess we were talking about same teams for the running backs, but Cedric Wilson feels like someone that could come back to Dallas for cheap. Well, I think that Michael Gallup, despite getting the uh, uh, the, the unfortunate ACL tear there right at the end of the year, Michael Gallup is someone that projects and can be a true outside wide receiver where Wilson Wilson's a slot guy. And as, especially in this year of football, it's not like slot, well, see, slot wide receivers are not important. They're just – there's more of them uh, available and – Having a true outside threat is difficult to find. Cedric so Wilson or Juju? Who'd you rather have in a dynasty? Oh, my goodness. Juju. Speaking of big slot receivers. Right. Yeah, probably Juju. Okay. Probably. Okay. All right. Uh, you had a big game from Tyler Lockett. What, what's new? He, he He's really good at doing that sometimes. Against and Arizona then, especially. And then Mike Evans with a, a big game, eight straight 1,000-yard season. Cooper Cup ends with 145. 1947 and 16. The dude uh, was unstoppable this year. And his if you look at his game log, it is the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen in your life. Right. His one bad game, Uno, his singular bad game on the season, he was five for sixty four. He was you know what I mean? Like that was his that was horrific. That was his his for trash him. game. His trash his game was trash five game for sixty four. Five for sixty four on thirteen targets. I mean, he was. <laughs> I mean, one hundred and ninety one targets. I don't know if we had seen that number. One ninety one. 
Yeah, out, outlandishly great, um, good dude, happy for him. He's a spitwad, so I love Cooper Cup. No question. Mike Williams ended up with 17 targets on those 64 pass attempts, 9 for 119. He's a free agent as well, is he not? Yes, he, he is. is. Debo Samuel was unstoppable from beginning to end. I think he edged out Brandon Ayuk fantasy-wise this year. Uh, yeah, the, because of the did, last week. Hold on. Did we calculate the numbers? The This last week was added in, and he did, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> over the, so I was listening. at When their game was going on, I was listening to the broadcast because I was driving at the time, and it was the 49ers broadcast specifically that I was listening to, and their announcers were just talking about just – just hand the ball to Debo because they can't tackle him. That's what they do. And it's just true. You can't tackle Debo Samuel. Does he literally just bathe in Crisco? Mild, 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 mild. You cannot tackle that man. You can't. And he had 14 total touchdowns on the year. He threw for one in the game. And uh, he had 1,400 receiving yards on the year after filling in all these different roles like you can build a game plan around Debo and win every single week. You can. And, I mean, we're dunking on Jason for his ridiculous Brandon Ayuk takes. Thank uh, you. But Brandon Ayuk did have over 100 yards yesterday, so it's not like he was a terrible play in his own right. Brandon Ayuk should be considered in the category of, mm, I won't say post – I mean, post-hype sleeper or like off-season potential dynasty buy just because of draft capital, the fact we've seen him be elite. And, you know, they're, they're going to move forward with Trey Lance. I mean, that's going to be their future. And so... Hopefully. Th th that's <laughs> possibly going to be their future. I mean, it's like, I, I as the Trey Lance fantasy truther, it's not 0% <laughs> yeah. that... that uh, Trey Lance is still on the bench next year. Well, I tell you what, if they, if they win, because they... They got to go to Dallas this week. And if they win that game and they make a little playoff run, you're right. There's going to be fear in the streets of everybody that drafted yes. Trey Lance and Dynasty. Uh, Tyler Higby, uh, much like he did the Ryan Tannehill of the tight end position, showed up when you needed him least. Two touchdowns in week 18. Gronkowski, seven for 137. And then the doctor, Dalton Schultz. Yeah, uh, baby. Was two, two touchdowns for the doctor. Mark Andrews always gets it done. Zach Ertz was uh, solid yet again. Jason started the week. Travis Kelsey, Hunter Henry. Not too bad. Nope, not too bad. You know who was bad, though? Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, I wouldn't, I, you know, I don't know if they're big boy pants in week 18, but for mm. some people they were. And uh, Kyler, not a great fantasy uh, finish. Nope. Carson Wentz, we talked about it. I, I don't know what that team does moving forward. I think I think Wentz is locked in at least for one more year. Yeah, and and you did have disruption at the end with the COVID list, and who knows they, that team? They could use some more offensive weapons outside of Jonathan Taylor, if you ask me. But Najee Harris, uh, woof, uh, eleven for twenty eight yeah. to finish the year, but he's going to be a staple on that offense. The big question I think is just going to be, you know. <laughs> the the pie is going to get made. What's the recipe? Is it going to be inefficiency and volume for Najee Harris for, for the next few years as they find a quarterback? Or are they going to get some things fixed on the offensive line and turn him into... Because I think that's the gap between Najee Harris, the RB10, and Najee Harris, the perennial top five. Sure. Well, and then the nice thing is, is we've seen kind of the floor. The floor is right. unbelievably great. If they if they stink, if they don't have a quarterback solution and their offensive line is bad, uh, okay, well, because on the course of the season, he That's was actually point. the running back for this year. So you see the talent, and if they actually fix a thing or two, uh, man crushes all around for Najee. Cordero Patterson was 4 for 11. Do you ever see a, a relevant Cordero Patterson game again? No, free, I, free I, agent. Is this the end for Dynasty Patterson? It is. Players? It was. It was an unbelievable final year for Cordero at this age. He'll still play in the NFL next year. He'll get a contract with someone. He's a valuable weapon, um, but he isn't going to find a situation where he gets the opportunities he got this year as an integral part of an offense. So I, I think we we just simply have to celebrate what he did for. 75% of this year and, and move on. What you, is, can't, you can't stay a supernova forever. 
No, eventually it eventually turn it turns into a black hole. And unless you're give, Debo Samuel, well, he yeah, you know, uh, he he could be in his supernova right now. I'm just saying, it doesn't last forever for anybody. Cordero did say he wants to stay in Atlanta, and the only the only thing I question is, I feel like Patterson's struggles at the end of the year were because they didn't let him p- do anything. It was like why didn't you, you you're not throwing him the ball anymore you're not handing him the ball anymore so you can't do anything anymore yes, like it, the, the 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 volume just disappearing right was very strange but that's also i mean russell gage injury is that you have I don't to blame even, that no ridley no I do, russell I do gage not know. Is, yeah it's weird kyle kyle from atlanta i don't know if you're still identifying as an atlanta fan and if so i'm sorry but kyle do you have any insight for us it's just painful to watch. <laughs> painful. Painful. Like like you you start the drive. Like we've been here with Josh Rosen before. You start the drive, but you know the end of the drive. I just know it's not going anywhere. Yeah. At all. In, it's in just a, a waste of drive. time. Yeah. It's just a waste of of everybody's time. <laughs> I mean, it's it. I, <laughs> the refs. Can we just wrap this thing I up? I mean, can we start on fourth down? I got yeah, a brunch. It, I mean, what a mess. And then, uh, un- unfortunately, you know. Week 18, you didn't know how much A.J. Dillon you were going to see. So I guess you could say it's kind of disappointing, but you can't really say that. And then, you know, Javante Williams versus Melvin Gordon, it didn't even out on the last week of the year. Melvin Gordon was uh, unbelievable. He was yes. something like nine points, something a carry. He wrote himself a nice big check for next year. He certainly did. Uh, wide receivers, uh, do you have any lasting, like are we going to forget the burns of Tyreek Hill at the end of this year and just move forward happily? I th- I think we will because of the history of how good he's been for so long, but you can't really understate uh, or, or you can't overstate how bad he was after the bye week, and it it's a long stretch of games. I mean, you're you're talking about the last six games where he pretty much only had one great game. Yeah, um, his over over a six game sample, which is you know a third of the whole season. Uh, his 17 game pace would be 869 yards um it's that not is nice. not nice not at all you you're talking about um a, a 17 game pace of two touchdowns he was just not extremely involved so i'm not worried going forward because i'm going to bank on talent history uh quarterback head coach uh, but it certainly sucked and if you had tyreek if you got to the playoffs with Tyreek, you certainly felt it. C.D. Lamb's season was a insert word here. Oh man, uh, I guess by the what the what the hype got to by draft season, you have to say it was a disappointment. Finished uh, at wide receiver eighteen on the season, seventy nine for eleven hundred and six. Yeah, the six touchdowns is pretty disappointing. Eleven hundred <laughs> yards is it's like that's. That's not too shabby. We're going to have to adjust our mentality, though, with these yardage numbers, with the extra week. Sure, yeah. I mean, not like, not drastically, but if you are thinking, you know, an extra 60 to 100 yards, then yes, you do have to make an adjustment. That'll be a fun one to look at in the truth episodes. Kyle making that point, like looking at Amari Cooper, looking at CeeDee Lamb. Right. You did have weeks of, of no Dak. You you had a lot of disruption and... um you know, this playoff run might have something to say about the roster they bring back as well. Uh, Devontae Smith, three for 41. You know, it's it's been really, it's been tough because there's no volume yep. there for him. So it's like you make a play, you got a good game, you don't make a play, you get four, you know, three for 41, four for 51, that type of thing. I mean, and he just, he didn't play. He Like, they rested people. He was only in on 19% of the snaps. So that was, Philadelphia was one of those teams where he was very difficult to gauge just how much people are going to play. And the answer was they are not going to. Kyle yeah. Pitts ended up ending the year with basically the one of the best rookie tight end seasons and still didn't return draft capital with just one touchdown on the entire year. Yeah. Unfortunately. Because of that painful, painful, painful offense that Kyle spoke of. <laughs> do whatever you got to do to get him in a dynasty league, though. He's going to be an unfair advantage for a, a long time. Shall we introduce our footy noms? Yes! Mm. Ha <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, oh man! Oh, so welcome into the footy <laughs> nominations. I have I just such to dance. excitement uh, for today's footy noms. I respect but the song the doesn't ever stop, right? I mean, the song goes forever. I, I pulled it down. Okay. Uh, FootClanVote.com. Do you want me to start it again? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, we're back, baby. <laughs> shoulders only. <laughs> oh, shoulders only. That's oh, a good dance. Man. All right. We've got footy <laughs> nominations. FootClanVote.com. Winners will be announced on Thursday's show. I'm excited about uh, a, a lot of these. You know, there are some that I think are foregone conclusions, but um, why don't I read the uh, categories and then we'll, we'll take turns reading some of the nominations. All right. The first category is going to be performance of the year, which is a single week performance that was the most impressive on the season. Last year, Alvin Kamara took this home with that touchdown. Merry Christmas. Was it six of them? Oh, my God. Yeah. Man. Should have uh, been seven. Goodness but gracious. Sean Payton went turned into the Grinch. I think we have some really good uh, competitors in this one, though. Jason, you want to read our, uh, our uh, contenders? Yeah, you've, you've got Jonathan Taylor in week 11 putting up 51 fantasy points oh on the back gosh. of four rushing touchdowns, one receiving touchdown. You have Jamar Chase, championship week, week 17 with 50 points of his own on 12 targets, 11 for 266 and three. He won a lot of people championships. Yes, he did. I, I love that we've got a couple here that are in the championship week. Mike, you and I, we stayed yes. alive and got a championship on the back of Travis Kelsey's week 15 performance. 36 fantasy points. He had 10 for 191 and two touchdowns in the playoffs. You have Justin Herbert's monster week 550 fantasy point performance where he had four passing touchdowns one rushing touchdown and over 400 total yards and then of course joe burrow in week 16 Ooh, baby uh he had 46.1 fantasy points 525 yards four passing touchdowns mike's start of the week that week and uh yeah those those bengals certainly got people championships so long as they weren't playing in week 18 championship leagues joe burrow or justin herbert who do you like more in a dynasty Oh man, that's a. That's I like a them both. Very, I that's like a them very both. Good question. I like them both. I think I lean Herbert. Yeah, but I, it's crazy. Yeah, they're they're great. All right, the second category here, and again, footclanvote.com to contribute. Uh, fantasy Reapers Man of the Year. I'll go ahead and read these out. Which player's painful injury hurt fantasy players the most this year? And I do believe that it's going to be a tight one here. It Last is. year's winner was Christian McCaffrey. This year's uh, nominees are Christian McCaffrey. Back-to-back McCaff <laughs> -back nominations for um, Christian McCaffrey. Which I don't know if you saw him come out and talk about, you know, he's only 25, I think, 24, 25, and he, just the durability, the question marks, and, you know, he, he kind of dismissed all of that. But Christian McCaffrey's a nominee. Derrick Henry, who was uh, just incredible and was a devastating loss for fantasy players. And then Raheem Mostert in week one with all the hype and hope. DeAndre the, Raheem Most, the, the Mostert one is like uh, compounded by Elijah Mitchell's breakout. Uh, sure. That, that all those points, that would have been Mostert. And then DeAndre Hopkins as well, uh, yeah. a nominee. Derrick Henry only played basically – like seven and a half games. He's the running back 16 on the season. Yeah, it's it's silly. And then Oof. we may um, we may get a, a playoff run here where everyone feels really confident next year or, or the opposite. Number three here. I'll read the category, Mike. You want to give All us right. the nominees. The Poopiest Pants Award. Despite high expectation, this player let down fantasy managers over and over again. Last year's winner was Ezekiel Elliott, who was drafted at the 103. This year's nominees, we have Miles Sanders, was drafted as the running back 20. Allen Robinson, drafted as the wide receiver 11. Terry McLaurin, drafted as the wide receiver 10. Darren Waller, drafted as the tight end 3. And Saquon Barkley, drafted as the running back 8. Whose pants are the poopiest? Yeah, I mean, there's different sized pants here. I think Allen Robinson sucked the most this year um but man i saquon first rounder he did stop, a stop leading the judge 
I look, we just share our opinions here. He he hurt me a lot. Um, Saquon did. Waiver wire wonder footy award. Which undrafted waiver wire stud was the best signing of the 2021 season? Last year's winner was James Robinson. Yeah, last year's winner was uh, you didn't really need to have a a vote, but this year. This year will be very interesting. Yes. There's a lot of great options. A lot of factors, too. Yeah, Cordero Patterson, who was awesome uh, early, and uh, but then got cold late. You had Elijah Mitchell, who was a week one waiver wire pickup, which adds a little bit of value, but missed a lot of time with some was injury. Was sporadic. Was great when he played, though. Do you, when you're po casting your vote, do you think, well, no, it's Rashad Penny. I picked him up just in time for a playoff run, and he brought me a championship similar at wide receiver to Amon Ross St. Brown. Who's oh, also man. there at tight end? You got Dalton Schultz, someone that you know you you picked up off the waiver wire and you healed your tight end position, and of course Hunter Renfro, who uh, when Darren Waller went down became a stud wide receiver for your team. A lot of great options. I don't think I know who it's going to be. Uh, did you guys see the the similarities to last night's Renfro Mike Williams game and the Clemson? Uh, Alabama, Renfro, Mike Williams not. game. No. Where, yeah. It, it's, it's two touchdowns for Renfro, one for Williams in that mm. older game, and uh, very similar last night, two and one. All right, fancy wide receiver of the year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one should just be not – it shouldn't be real, or you no. should get to combine everybody else. This should this this is called the I'm Sorry Debo Samuel Award. <laughs> That's what this is called. It, you're right because it, it, you are supposed to factor in draft position to this category, not just final year stats. Except for Cooper Cup's draft position was so great. So yeah. last year was Stephon Diggs. This year's nominees: Cooper Cup, the the winner here, right? And, and some then guys: Adams, Samuel, Jamar Chase, and Justin Jefferson. Look, to we, we got to be fair to those guys because it is it's an honor just to be nominated. You're yeah, right. Congratulations yeah. for your runner-up award. Your nomination is not in the mail. Yeah. All right, the fantasy running back of the year when factoring in draft position and big game performances. What running back is going to get the footy this year? Last year's winner was Derrick Henry. The nominees are Jonathan Taylor, Austin Eckler, Joe Mixon, Najee Harris, Leonard Fournette, let's not forget him, and then James Conner with the 15 touchdowns in Arizona. Will be interesting to see who wins that. I think that mm -hmm. one is probably I, decided, but probably, we'll, but we'll find out. There are definitely some other factors that will be at play there. I mean, like James Conner, Leonard Fournette, very late round draft picks. Who you're right? Who were running back one for your team for a long time? Who are the nominees for the fantasy tight end of the year? At fantasy tight end of the year, you have Mark Andrews with his second breakout campaign. Uh, level up. Uh. Uh, you have Travis Kelsey. George Kittle, who dominated for a while, Dalton Schultz off the waiver wire, and Rob Gronkowski coming back to relevance. And then fantasy quarterback of the year. Again, you want to factor in draft position, big game performances, impact to fantasy teams. The contenders here, Mike, after Josh Allen won it last year. So we got Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, the plant man, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Jalen Hurts. This is the first category that I don't even know who I'm going to vote for. I, I, I don't know who the fantasy quarterback of the year was. Nobody ran away with it this year. No, that's going to be a very competitive one. The fantasy breakout player of the year, uh, this is always a fun one. Last year it was DK Metcalf who took this home. This year's contenders, Jamar Chase, Najee Harris, Jalen Hurts, Damian Harris, who was, I think, uh, did he enter the teens in touchdowns this year? And then Debo Samuel. Okay, and Cordero. Maybe this is where Debo will get some respect. We'll find out. We'll find out. The rookie of the year. Which players, fantasy football, rookie of the year? This is really tough because with Pat Fryermuth out there, I don't oh, know how. Oh, come on. The, <laughs> the nominees are Pratt. 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 Pryor Pratt. <laughs> Pat Fryermuth is nominated for Jason. Mm -hmm. Kyle uh, Pitts. So Najee Harris, Jamar Chase. Jalen Waddle, which Jalen Waddle, Waddle, Waddle fully embracing the Waddle touchdown celebration has elevated his status for sure in my mind. Just sure. It's right there. 
I know you're probably, well, I don't know if I want to do this, but sets the rookie wide receiver reception record. And just he waddles. He When he scores, it's real simple. Just waddle, waddle. And he waddles away. Uh, and Kyle Pitts is also nominated. The comeback player of the year, which fantasy player amazed you the most in their return to relevance last year was actually Alex Smith, who won this award. And this year's nominees, Leonard Fournette, James Conner, Zach Ertz, and Matthew Stafford. Yeah. How do you feel about Zach Ertz now, Mike? Full circle. Um, I, Pretty impressive in Arizona. I think he was a very opportunistic man. He did make some – he made some very good plays down the stretch. So – Maybe we had a Carson Wentz problem up in Philadelphia. I don't mm. know. Uh, we, we definitely did. Well, <laughs> one thing yeah. we have um, new this year is a new category. I didn't know this. Yeah, the playoff king. Who drove fantasy managers to championships during the playoff stretches? You have Joe Burrow with his back-to-back uh, -back quarterback one performances uh, in the final two playoff weeks. You have Josh Allen who was the quarterback seven, quarterback three, and quarterback four in that stretch. At running back, Rashad Penny, he had them, you know, RB42, not that great, but then RB9 and the massive championship winning week, RB1. Devin Singletary, RB6, mm -hmm. RB11, and RB4 in that stretch. You had Amon Ross St. Brown win a lot of people championships off the waiver wire. Wide receiver six, seven, and two. He was just great. Uh, Devontae Adams. Wide receiver 15, wide receiver 2, and wide receiver 4. And Mark Andrews, beast mode in the playoffs. Tight end 2, tight end 1, tight end 3. Uh, man, I w I'm, I'm very curious how, uh, how this one goes because people are going to be passionate about this one. You won a championship, you're going to vote for your guy. Mm -hmm. Steal of the draft, which player was the absolute best value? I mean, this one is competitive. Stephon Diggs won it last year, six-round pick, ended up with a huge year. This is where Cooper Cup in the fourth round and Debo Samuel in the late seventh round go up against one another. And then you had Leonard Fournette in the eighth and James Conner in the ninth. So the steal of the draft award um, going to be, sometimes this can be a reflection on biggest impact because the vote might go the direction where the most f listeners of our show ended up with these players on the team. Mm -hmm. And now we're into the good stuff. This is the real heavy hitters. The Nickname of the Year Award, and this year we are opening this up so you can choose your three favorite nicknames. So make sure you vote accordingly. Vote for your three favorite. We have Elijah Well, let, let's remember last year's winner, Mike. I'm oh, sorry. I am I, so sorry. Yeah. The, the, the 2020 winner, uh, I mean, it makes so much sense with it being the year 2020, but the, the winner was Philip Rivers, who... Earned the name P River. P River. P mm. River. Don't go swimming in P River. So this year's nominees, we have Elijah Missile, which is Elijah Mitchell. Davis Mills became General Mills. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Cooper Cup became Koopa Cup of Coffee. Koopa Cup of Coffee. Tim Patrick was rebranded <laughs> all the way into a brand new gigantic contract. Congratulations to Fireball Jones. <laughs> I feel like we did that. Yeah, you're welcome, yes. Tim. Yes. Uh, Javante Williams. It was short, but we burned a little bright at the end there with Javante's Inferno. Dalton Schultz became. Doc <laughs> he, got, he got his doctorate. He became Dr. Schultz. Uh, Michael Pittman became Pity City. T Tony Jones Jr. became Tony Tony Brooks James Jones Jr. <laughs> because nicknames, this is what we do. They get long. Matt Nagy, the budget magician. And last but not least. Pat Fryer Muth became the Muth. The Muth. The Muth is Luf, which is, <clears throat> it may or may not be why we need voting for second and third place. <laughs> yes, based I on shirt sales. I won't say if that is true or not, but those are the nickname nominees from and 2021. Then, uh, we also, of course, have our Fantasy Footballers Moment of the Year Award Favorite show moment from this past season. And we will release video clips of all the show moment nominees that will be posted on Twitter and Instagram uh, today. So keep yeah, your eyes out, out for that. Uh, that will include the dynasty pants, the producers being forced to sing the mailbag drop, mm. Jason reacting to Christian McCaffrey's injury, which was delightful. 
Big Ben thinking about cheeseburgers. <laughs> The listener voicemail making a mistake and Brooks savagely leaving it in. Just dunking on him. The Millie Maker victory for yours truly. The coldest take ever when Jason reported Cortland Sutton was going to leave the team and he signed a contract while the words were coming out of his mouth. (laughs) Al Borland's redemption when the Packers beat the Cardinals and Al Borland decided to get fired again on the show. Just dunked uh, all over us. Oh, man. And the wheel of shame with the fish face. (laughs) And then Dinner Butter, of course, oh. on the Megalodon show, which was spectacular. We're also going to get some videos out with the Wheel of Shame compilation, a grand reading of Jason's Boom Boom Kickers. Hopefully, uh, you have checked that out on BoomBoomKicker.com, which fan made. Yep. And then a full highlight video for the 2021 year. So it has been, I mean, when you look back, guys, all the ups and downs, any any kind of final thoughts? By the way, footclanvote.com. Make sure you vote before Thursday. Any final thoughts on the season? Um, just it was it was fun. It definitely had its ups and downs. I'm I'm pretty glad that this one's done. <laughs> I'm excited for 2022. Uh, I think we will be when I look back at this season. Week 15 will be what stands out to me of. The week that every single fantasy football player chose to not show up, and it was just the most chaos I'd ever seen, and they it had happened in the playoffs. So that that's my that'll be my biggest memory, I think, from the season. Yeah, week fifteen was a massacre, just absolute uh, craziness. But I I think it was a really fun year, um, and I know we got a lot of Footland titles out there. So uh, yeah, very successful. Just uh, uh- hopefully. Hopefully you didn't have to win it in week 18. <laughs> I know the the kind of uh, cliche idea of a roller coaster ride has been used to describe the season, but I did recently go on a roller coaster ride and I feel like it, it summed up this past year quite well, which was um, I had a pretty good time. I got a little nauseous and uh, I got to the end of the ride and I, when I stepped off, I was a little dizzy and I walked in not a straight line. So that's about how I feel <laughs> over the course of the year. Overall, I had a good time. I'd go on it again. Like I'd ride this thing uh, for sure another time, but, um, you know, doesn't mean I didn't get beat up along the way. So, uh, but every year has its own surprises for us mm-hmm. and it'll be fun ha- putting out some of these videos reflecting on them. Brooks, do you have any, any thoughts on this past year? Nope. Oh, well, you said. know what? That well was said. that was just uh, very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brooks. All right, we'll announce the footy winners on Thursday. Give you our Super Bowl picks, and yes, we'll foot- be in uh, truth truth episode mode here soon. Footclanvote.com. Get that vote in before Thursday. Thank you, Footclan, for joining us. Thank you for making the season what it has been. We will see you in a couple days. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.